even if it's open, can we trust a sheriff who, with this obvious evidence, and it's going to come out now, the evidence, now that the trial's over, we're going to be able to share the evidence with the public, and uh, we're not going to let this issue die. And I think when people in their homes and on the news see the evidence in this case, they're going to say, "My, how could this be? How could a sheriff say this was suicide? And so do we trust then a sheriff who's had this evidence all this time and didn't do anything about it, in fact, snuffed the whole investigation by saying it was a suicide? Do we trust that person, even if he reopens it, do we trust him to prosecute it or to really diligently pursue it any further, to spend resources necessary to get the job done? I mean, I don't think that he's shown that he deserves that type of trust. So I, I'm just, I'm very, very concerned with the current administration and quite frankly think something has to change. What about this idea of malicious prosecution? Malicious prosecution, it happens when a lawyer brings a case and there's no basis for the case and, uh, or they bring it for a malicious purpose and they lose. In order to get sued for malicious prosecution, you have to lose. There's no such thing as malicious winning, right? It doesn't happen. So when they talk about, you know, defamation, you know, God bless the First Amendment. We can share our opinions. That's what this country's all about. And uh, everything that happens in court is privileged. That You can't sue somebody for what they said in court. There's a specific civil code that covers that. It's a privileged uh, venue. So when they, when they throw words out like that, um, that's, that's, that's to sensationalize in the media. That has, that has no reality. Are you up for an appeal? What? Are you up for an appeal? Am I up for an appeal? Look, I'll give the two questions. Up for an appeal? You know what? I just am expected. Am I up for it? Um, it's just going to be more time and money, and eventually uh, we will succeed. Have you talked to the jurors? And the jurors, no. The jurors were given the opportunity to leave uh, out the back way if they chose to do so. And literally all 12 got up, banded together very closely, uh, like a scrum almost, and got out the back door. The, the, the bailiff here, a great guy, has been very protective of the jury and their privacy. Um, you know, they, 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 made, they did their civic duty here. They took six weeks out of their lives. Um, you know, they don't get paid for being, being jurors. Uh, and they made a very significant decision here. And I think they're ready to get on with their lives and, uh, and not deal with all of the Do you the know if it was a unanimous decision or what yeah, the count was? Yeah, it was nine to three. There were three people who felt. And I was hoping to speak with them so that we could see if, uh, if they said, I, I, my thought is, and this is speculation on my part, is that if we would have talked to them, they probably would have said it's murder, but they didn't feel. We need electric buses. Uh -huh. uh, my, my, it's speculation on my part, but I think that if we talked to those other jurors, I think they probably would have felt that it was murder. I think the evidence is very strong. There's direct evidence that it's murder. Circumstantial evidence uh, is, is more challenging. And, and I think, I know I've talked to other people who've said that even though it's just a preponderance of the evidence, the standard here, just, you know, more evidence on one side than the other. So a feather more on our side would be enough to win, technically, if you follow that instruction. I think when you're dealing with murder, some people want more. You know, when you're accusing a person of killing somebody, it's a very serious accusation. They may want, want more than that. Uh, or maybe they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't think the evidence was strong enough that we offered uh, to, 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 to pin Adam to it. Uh, the important thing is that nine people did, and, and the, I think the huge thing. And say we go up an appeal, and we and we and we and we happen to lose on appeal. Even does it really matter? Does it really matter? It's not about the money here anyway. What was important here was to get the evidence out to the public, show what's going on in the sheriff's department, so that San Diego can say, okay, this is not right. This is not right. We need to fix it. And that's what ballots are for. That's that's what elections are for. And uh, that's that's what's important here. We get it out. We're going to continue to get it out. The evidence is going to continue to be shared. I hope you guys will still help us do that. And really, there's a lot of people following this. They're going to make a decision. They're going to make a decision about a new sheriff. And I think the more they find out about this case, the more they're going to be very, very skeptical about what's going on with the sheriff's department. Can you tell us a little bit more about Rebecca Mo Rebecca's mother's response? She was not here yesterday. Yeah, she's yeah, but she had to get actually she had to get back to work, you know, and you know what that means. She's got her four pairs of gloves on and her two jackets and a sweater and a hat. She's you know packing pork there in in, in Missouri, but uh, she 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 cried, she cried, and she she thanked Mary, she thanked me, uh, and she thanked God, you know, for for giving.
giving her the strength to deal with it and for all of us to have the strength to have uh, carried on this fight. Um, and she, she's such a neat lady. Uh, you just want to hug her. She's a really beautiful human being. It's awful what she had to go through here. Uh, but it's still, now unfortunately it's a different situation for the family because up until today, they were still helping their sister. You know, they were still fighting for her. So they hadn't really processed that she's gone. And, and I know with Mary, that's particularly tough because she was, she's there saving her sister, you know, up, up until, this, until this verdict. And now, in fact, her, her entire married uh, time with Doug has, has had this, you know, hanging in their lives and, and distracting them in their lives. And, uh, and now they need to get on with raising their family and, and letting Rebecca go, you know, and uh, accepting that she's gone. And, and that's going to be a tough transition. Is Rebecca's mother going to be able to collect any of the money from Adam Shadow? We will start the collection process right away. Uh, will, you know, will she get her $500 a month that Rebecca was paying her? I think she will. I, I think that's the kind of money that will come out of this is about $500 Even if this an appeal? Even pending yeah, an appeal? Yeah, because he can't. In order to stop collections on appeal, you have to put up, Mr. Ganow, how are you? Can I introduce Steve here? Another outstanding lawyer in town. And, 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 good, and very good friend next week. All right. I'll hang out over there next week with you then. Um, what are we talking about here? Oh, the appeal. It's, uh, it's one and a half times the judgment is what has to be put up. So they would have to put up a bond for $7.5 million. And the great thing about that would be when we win the appeal, then we get the $7.5 million. So the five, we get the half a million or the five million plus 10% interest while it's, while it's pending. So I don't think they'll do that, which means we can collect on it while the appeal's pending. And that just means garnishing wages. Uh, Tennessee law allows us to garnish 25% of disposable income. So it winds up being about $15,000 a year maybe. Uh, assuming he works full time, I, I would surprise me if he just kind of retired now and, you know, we don't see anything. What was the percentage they got? 25% of disposable income. He's been paying Mr. Jack Nye's legal bills. Well, you know, it's speculation again on my part, but everybody believes I think it's his brother Jonah. So, can I, so let's get back to the appeal I know this has cost you a lot of time and money are you really up for an appeal if you have to go through do you ready to put in some more time and some more money is my wife gonna be watching this yes <laughs> I told my wife we're moving on we're getting our lives back together at this point because it's been a it, this has been a, a major part of our lives for four and a half years um, after what we've gone through in this last four and a half years an appeal is nothing it's just another brief. It's at this point in time, they will spend six figures on a brief. It'll be beautiful. Uh, it'll really be a work of art. There will be no typographical errors in it. It will be laid out so cleanly. And we will put in pieces of paper that are bound together that aren't as pretty, but put up the facts that are necessary to get the job done. And I think that our C minus paper will beat their A plus papers at the Court of Appeal. And you have spell check. Huh? You have spell check. I do have spell check. I do have spell check. And we'll get some help. We'll get some help. We'll be, we've already spoken to appellate counsel. And so we'll get somebody who knows what they're doing to get and help us at that point in time. Anything else, anybody? Guys, thanks again for covering this. The family really appreciates yeah. everything we've been doing. Please stay tuned because we have a lot more to share. And days and weeks. Uh,